From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Lavanka, and welcome to this special edition of Studio Bergen. Today, we'll look back at the highlights from 2011 at the state's largest community college. Bergen welcomed a new president this year, as Dr. Jose Adamas was named interim president by the college's board of trustees in July. Dr. Adamas previously served as academic vice president. Dr. Adamas, who has spent his career in higher education as a professor and administrator, has worked elsewhere as a provost and dean. He also served as a Middle States Commission on Higher Education Evaluator and Evaluation Team Chair. In September, Dr. Adamas sat down with me here on Studio Bergen to discuss his goals as president. I think for, for now I want to refocus the institution back to our core mission and that is teaching and learning, mm -hmm. which is the reason why we are here as an institution. We want to make sure that we offer the best quality academic programs mm -hmm. and non-credit programs for our students here and also for the community at large. Mm -hmm. So that's extremely important to me. Dr. Adamas earned a bachelor's and master's degree at Seton Hall University. He achieved a doctorate in applied linguistics from Teachers College at Columbia University. The college will soon form a search committee to select a permanent president. Dr. Adamas will apply for the position. A decision is expected by July 1st, 2012. In one of the year's other top stories, a record number of students graduated from the college in May at commencement 2011. The new record, 2,139 students, turned their tassels May 19th at the Izod Center in East Rutherford. Keynote speaker, U.S. Treasurer Rosie Rios, congratulated the graduates. And so I say to all of you, one day, no matter how fabulous your life is going to be, you will wish for this day. No doubt in my mind, you will wish for this day because never will your life be full of such hope and joy and promise and accomplishment than what you feel now for yourself and for the next generation. So I say to you, open your eyes. Open your eyes for the very first time and enjoy this amazing ride called life. You have earned it. Congratulations to all of you. It is now time for you to go make your mark in history. Valedictorian Jessica Benilla graduated with a 4.0. In her remarks to her peers, she discussed her determination and wished them success. And I hope that my story makes many see that it is possible. You cannot change your past, but your actions can change the future. Just like I changed mine, you can too. And so dare to dream without the fear of defeat. The class of 2011 included 67 members of Phi Theta Kappa, the Honor Society of Two-Year Colleges, 41 4.0 GPA holders, 100 countries represented, and an 81-year-old graduate. A few months later, in September, the college broke another record, this time for enrollment. For the fall 2011 semester, 17,271 students made the decision to begin or continue their studies at Bergen. The college's enrollment has soared in recent years, jumping 13 percent from fall 2008 to fall 2011. With greater numbers of students choosing Bergen, the college has needed to expand its physical campus in order to accommodate its growing population. On October 18th, the college and local officials cut the ribbon on the school's $5.5 million student center, a facility designed to give students a central space for clubs, activities, and relaxation. Student Perpetua Romaine welcomed the addition. I'm excited because I've been waiting for a long time. I was here at Bergen and I saw the old student center and I've been here throughout the construction and we've been writing about it in the paper. So I'm finally able to see how beautiful it is and it's environmentally friendly and I would just love to see more of the students and for the clubs to build better because of the student center. The student center features a cafe, welcome desk, Wi-Fi, improved entry points, and energy efficient design practices. The renovation added 31% more interior space to the former center. 
Expansion and facilities continued across the college's locations as Bergen Community College at the Meadowlands unveiled numerous renovations, including a complete refurbishment of the fifth floor, the construction of new student service functions, a lounge, and classrooms. With more than 4,100 seats filled in 163 classes in the fall semester, other renovations, including a library, are on their way as more students take classes at the location. Additionally, the college also secured agreements with the Law and Public Safety Institute in Mawa and at Fort Lee High School in Fort Lee to establish those locations as satellite facilities for the college. A number of criminal justice classes are offered in Mawa, while business classes are offered at Fort Lee. Back at the main campus in Paramus, the college announced plans in June to expand and renovate its gymnasium and fitness center. The $8.5 million project to construct a new fitness and wellness center will add new classrooms, exercise equipment and areas, locker rooms, and restrooms. The state and county will equally share the total cost of the project as outlined under the County College Bond Act of the state of New Jersey, often referred to as Chapter 12 funding. The college also made news this year when it obtained a major grant, a $3.8 million award from the U.S. Department of Education. The grant, a five-year project that aims to boost Bergen's ability to recruit, retain, and graduate Hispanic students enrolling in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields, was approved by the college's Board of Trustees in October. Earlier this year, the college welcomed back former President Dr. Judith K. Wynn for a special event, the renaming of the School of Honors for her. Dr. Wynn, who led for 12 years from 1995 to 2007, said the event was humbling. I really don't have words that would be sufficient to express how special this is to me. Usually, you have to give money to get something named for you. <laughs> but I guess what I had to give was my undying belief that the best education possible should be available to everyone and that it can take you anywhere. Bergen offers 26 honors courses with approximately 300 students enrolled in the program. On a somber note, the college bid a final goodbye to former Dean of the Institute for Learning in Retirement, Lois Marshall, who passed away in April 2010. The college renamed the ILR program in Dean Marshall's honor in April, paying tribute to the only dean the program ever knew. At the event, sponsored jointly by the college and the Bergen Community College Paramus Rotary Club, Bergen's Chief Human Resources Officer, Jim Miller, a Rotary member and friend of Marshall, discussed her contributions. She loved Bergen County. With all her heart, she loved Bergen County. And she loved the college. She really loved this place. And she put 40 years into this place. And when I say she was a pillar, there's no question about that. She was a pillar. One of the, one of the, one of the things that really make this a great college, and we all miss it very, very much. Marshall worked for the college for more than 40 years. As an educator, she received hundreds of awards and commendations, including a U.S. presidential appointment to a three-year term on the National Advisory Council for Adult Education. After a short break, we'll take a look back at some student and college achievements from the past year, including the birth of Bergen's record-setting Facebook page. We'll be right back. You were the last to be born in a family of seven brothers. That's why you had to sleep on the seventh bunk bed and you developed vertigo. And that's why you couldn't become a pilot and you had to study engineering. You patented 367 inventions, but only three made it to market. The clap clap candle, the lazy runners, and the frit and go. That's why you don't have an apartment on the 16th floor, and you have it on the 5th. But that's where you met Carmen. After 237 dates, you finally proposed. With her, you had three children. The fourth ended up being a dog. It's not the same, but he adores you. Numbers change your life. That's why you should take control of your credit score by keeping your credit card balances low. For more tips, visit numberschangeyourlife.org. 
Welcome back to this 2011 Highlights edition of Studio Bergen. I'm Larry Lavanka. This year, the college's student newspaper, The Torch, found out it had the right stuff. The staff of the paper took home 19 awards in the annual New Jersey Press Foundation contest, including nine first place honors. The Torch staff earned its third consecutive first place for layout and design, and swept the editorial cartoon artistic illustration category for the second straight year. At an awards luncheon in Trenton, the Torch also won the Sweepstakes Award, which is given to the two and four year newspapers with the highest number of honors based on a point system. Foundation judges examined more than 250 entries from 15 of the state's 19 community colleges. Professor Lou Wheaton is the paper's faculty advisor. Students also received a different kind of award in April, scholarships, at the Bergen Community College's Foundation 11th Annual Ceremony. The Foundation distributed 160 scholarships to Bergen students, totaling more than $185,000. The event, which brought student scholarship winners and donors together to network, recognized the achievements of Bergen students from different disciplines, cultures, and backgrounds. Scholarships are awarded to students based on both merit and financial need. Just a few months ago in November, the Foundation began replenishing its scholarships for 2012 at its biggest fundraiser of the year, the annual Medallion Awards Dinner. The event, which took place at the Rockley Country Club, brought together the college's supporters and members of the institution. The yearly event supports student scholarships, faculty research, and other charitable causes at Bergen. Organizers and college officials such as Interim President Dr. Jose Adamas said the event is important. Some of our students, even though they receive financial aid from the federal government, from the state, you know, it doesn't cover everything that is needed for tuition. There are sometimes gaps, and this, these, these kinds of scholarship events really support those students and the students' ability to stay at the institution to be successful, to fulfill their dreams. At the event, the college honored the Ortani Bank Charitable Foundation, which has donated more than $2 million to various organizations in the county, including a $100,000 gift to the college announced at the Medallion Awards. To date, the Bergen Community College Foundation has raised more than $19 million for the benefit of Bergen students. Meanwhile, Bergen students lit up the scoreboard this year in sports. Early in the year, the women's basketball team capped off their season by finishing with their best record in nearly 30 years, earning a trip to the Region 19 tournament. The team was led by Ashley Devaney, a second team All-American. Not to be outdone, the men's team also earned a spot in the Region 19 tournament, and second year guard Asmar Edwards was a third team All-American. The wrestling team, led by NJCAA Man of the Year coach Mike Massiano, also had success, sending two wrestlers to the national championships. The team secured its first winning record since 2004. In golf, the Bulldogs captured the school's ninth Region 19 championship and earned a spot in the national tournament. Third-year coach Tom McGovern was the Region 19 Coach of the Year. Fall athletes also had success. The men's soccer team's Cinderella Run boasted an upset of top-seeded Brookdale Community College in the Region 19 tournament. Later, the team earned an at-large bid in the national tournament. Also in the fall, the women's volleyball team earned a national tournament spot. Additionally, the cross-country and track and field teams had strong seasons. In other news, did you join Bergen's social network in 2011? If so, you weren't alone. More than 6,100 people did. The college's Facebook page, its first social media outreach, went live in January. Since then, the page has become the most followed community college Facebook page in New Jersey and one of the fastest growing in the nation. The page, which is administrated by an anonymous Bergen employee dubbed Mr. BCC by the page's followers, operates in a 24-7 environment. Mr. BCC answers questions, posts daily status updates, and keeps followers in the loop on the happenings at Bergen. The page has earned high marks for responsiveness, tone, and utility. The college expects to expand its social media presence by launching a Twitter account 
in 2012. Also this year, Bergen joined the company of such schools as Notre Dame, Cornell, and the University of Southern California when the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching recognized the college for its commitment to community engagement as it earned the group's community engagement classification. Bergen was one of only 12 community colleges nationwide to earn the honor. Bergen earned the award on the strength of initiatives such as its service learning program, issue-based institutes, local outreach campaigns, and workforce development programs. The college received another award when its chapter of Phi Theta Kappa, the Honor Society of Two-Year Colleges, earned one of 20 Distinguished Chapter and one of 50 Distinguished Honors in Action Awards at the organization's international conference. Additionally, the stars came out at Bergen in 2011 as numerous big-name guests spoke to the college community. Environmentalist Robert Kennedy Jr., the son of the late Robert Kennedy, visited in February speaking to a packed gymnasium. More than 1,000 people attended. Kennedy discussed his advocacy work and implored those in attendance to develop a greater consciousness about environmental issues. Women's rights activist Gloria Steinem spoke at Bergen on March 28th as the keynote speaker for Women's History Month. More than 500 people attended the event, which featured Steinem encouraging attendees to focus on achieving a humanity-driven society and to learn from one another. Steinem, who was scheduled to speak at four colleges that week, said she was the happiest at a community college campus because it was much more inclusive and part of the real world. Humorist and actor Charles Grodin also visited this year as part of an event organized by Project Literacy, a Bergen County nonprofit that promotes literacy for all individuals. Other guests included Josh Fox, the director of Academy Award-nominated documentary Gasland, which blew the whistle on fracking, a process of extracting natural gas that may have damaging environmental effects, and Nicholas Kristof, a New York Times columnist and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. Another event that drew a large audience and prominent guest speakers was the college's Forgotten Genocides Conference, which took place over two days and was jointly sponsored with Rutgers University. The conference, which took place in March, aimed to bring awareness to genocides throughout history with an emphasis on the Armenian Genocide of 1915. U.S. Congressman Frank Pallone visited Bergen on the first day of the conference to discuss his work with the victims of genocide and offered his perspective. One of the things that I'm very proud of is that as a society, we here in the United States continue to condemn genocide and we have a convention on genocide and it's probably never been the case in the history of the world there's been more consciousness of the fact that genocide, meaning intentionally trying to wipe out a different ethnic or nation, is something that's wrong. So in some ways, we have to be proud of the fact that at least we collectively as a people recognize that that's a, a wrong thing to do, that it's a, a crime against humanity, that it's not uh, something that's routine. Bergen's Center for Peace, Justice, and Reconciliation was integral in creating and staging the event. On a final note, of course, this also marked the year that this program debuted. I would like to say thank you to you for making it a success. On a personal note, thank you to Dr. Jose Adamas, the Office of Public Relations, and the Office of Media Technologies, whom without which this program would not be possible. I hope you enjoyed taking a look back at the year that was at Bergen Community College. Just a reminder, spring 2012 classes begin January 23rd at Maine campus. Happy New Year, and thanks for watching.